When it comes to accounts payable and mistakes, the stakes are very high. For a mistake in this, this area can mean money right out the door, money that is never coming back, or if it does, it doesn't come back without additional costs. That's why I make such a big deal about use of best practices, strong internal controls, and uniform enforcement of these practices across the board, no exceptions. If you could see my notes, you'd see that I wrote no exceptions in big bold letters. But enough about that. What is the worst mistake your accounts payable team can make? And more importantly, how can you make sure it doesn't happen in your shop? Stick around until the end when we share a few tips on how to ensure this mistake doesn't happen in your shop and what management can do to help. Now let's get your view on this matter and you can vote. With all the different mistakes possible in accounts payable, what do you think is the worst? A, missing an early payment discount. B, failing to verify an email requesting a change in bank account for an ACH payment. Or C, paying an invoice twice. Go ahead and pause this video and write the letter for your answer in the comments below. If you want, you can explain why you made the choice you did. Now, let me say real quickly that none of these mistakes are good, but we're looking for which mistake has the potential to do your organization the most harm. Now that you're all back, drum roll please. In my humble opinion, the correct answer is B, failing to verify an email requesting a change of bank account for an ACH payment. Let me explain why. This type of fraud has been exploding. Criminals, usually working in another country, Country, making recovering your lost funds all the more difficult, have been targeting accounts payable professionals with really good phony emails purporting to be their suppliers. While a few years ago it was easy to recognize these phony emails, that is no longer the case. The crooks have gotten really, really good at impersonating vendor emails. So accounts payable teams everywhere have to fight back. For once the money is gone, it's 99 and three quarters percent likely to be gone for good. While A, missing an early payment discount is certainly not desirable, the amount of money involved is usually relatively small. Most frequently when the discount is lost, it is a one-off and most organizations have adjusted their processes so they earn as many of these discounts as possible. And C, the duplicate payment of an invoice, while serious, can be fixed, albeit with a little effort. Supplier credits and statement audits mean that most of the duplicate payments will be be returned eventually, unless the supplier in question is willfully hiding the duplicates. While that happens, it does not happen that frequently. And although we do recommend that steps be taken to ensure you don't make duplicate payments and to recover them if you do, we don't think the issue is as serious as the frauds that are currently ripping into many accounts payable functions. You probably agree with our selection of not verifying change of bank accounts, but if you don't, you can feel free to explain in the comments why you disagree. I want to give you a few examples of just how smart these guys are when it comes to creating those emails. They know that a small letter M is very difficult to distinguish in print from a small R followed by a small N, especially in a long title. So in the word American, if the M is replaced with the aforementioned R and N, do you think you'd spot the difference in a long email address? I promise you that when mixed in with 30 or 40 other emails that you're trying to go through quickly, it is really difficult. Now, I promised at the beginning to share some tips on avoiding this headache, and we've got two sets. The first revolves around recognizing the fraudulent emails, and the second on what management can do to help with this exploding crisis. And make no mistake about it, it is a crisis. So let's get started with the first. What can you do to recognize these phony emails? Here are a few tips. Recognizing phony email tip number one. Well, doesn't that really roll off the tongue? But I digress. Criminals know that if someone is busy and overworked, they may take a shortcut and skip the verification trip step. So they will try and send the request at a time they know your staff is busy, say at the end of the month or late on a Friday right before a long hot holiday weekend. Yes, they work the process to their benefit and your detriment. Recognizing phony email tip number two. 
If there is a sense of urgency in their request, step back and do the verification. Again, criminals know that the quicker they can get you to make the change, the less likely, the more likely you are to make the mistake. The more time you have, the more likely you are to recognize the fraud. And if they send an email and then helpfully call you on the phone, be suspicious. Deep fake voices are becoming more commonplace. While it might be tempting to take this call as the verification you need, it is really not a good idea. Recognizing phony email tip number three. Realize that you must verify every request regardless of how good the email looks and you must do it using an alternate method of communication. This usually means picking up the phone for if the supplier's email was hacked, the criminals may intercept your email. Now you may be thinking, well, if their email was hacked, it's their problem and they'll have to make good on the funds. And the answer to that is you are probably right, but that won't come about without a lot of time and effort on your part dealing with the issue and proving it was their fault. Better not to have it happen. But if it was just a really good impersonation, say they purchased a URL that was so close to the real one you didn't realize, well, the loss would be yours. So verify every single request. But that's not all. As I indicated earlier, management can do their part too. But before we get to how management can help you fight this ugly crime, if you're getting any value from this talk, I'd love it if you'd hit the like or the thumbs up button. It sends a message that you're getting value from this talk and I should make more like it. A personal thanks to everyone who has liked this talk from me. Okay, management fraud protection tip number one. Recognize that there is more work in account payable as they attempt to verify every single email quest request for a change of bank account. In most cases, it will take between 15 and 30 minutes, if not longer, to chase down the right person to verify the change of bank, requ bank account request. This may seem like no big deal to you, but if your team is getting 20 of these a week, that can be one quarter of a full-time employee's 40-hour work week. And if you're a large enough organization, there may even be the need to increase staff. Something I realize no management team wants to hear, but you don't want to hear either that they sent money to someone that they shouldn't have. Management fraud protection tip number two. Make it clear to the group handling the verifications that there will be no repercussions if someone pays late or heavens forbid misses an early payment discount because they couldn't get the verification they needed completed. The team has to know that management considers it more important that this information be verified than that they get the early payment discount or that they meet certain pre productivity numbers. When your invoice processes are doing the verification, and by the way, I don't think they really should be, that should be done by the professionals responsible for the master vendor file, then the time needed for the verification needs to be taken into account. Sadly, these impersonated emails, which also might be supposedly from the CFO for a rush wire transfer, just the tip of the iceberg, the emails for the rush wires should also be verified, even if it looks like it came directly from the CFO or some high other level executive. Why? Because criminals have taken deep fakes to a whole new level using deep fakes of a CFO on a Zoom call to trick an unsuspecting employee into wiring a large sum. You need to know how that fraud works and how you can protect against it. That's why we did a short video on it explaining what the fraud is, how you can recognize the deep fakes, and you can watch it right now using the link that has appeared on your YouTube screen and is in the description. Stay safe.